Welcome to LifeWords Day by Day, where we've been doing a deep dive study in 1 Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul has been writing the instruction manual to go with the divine tools that are at the disposal of every church. Every Christian has at least one tool in their tool belt in order to serve the church that's been put there by God. And every tool is important. It's vital to the life and the health and the unity of the church. But it seems one major step had been overlooked in the use of the gifts at the church in Corinth. And that's what Paul is going to make crystal clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, and into chapter 13. He writes, And I will show you still a more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. So Paul is saying spirit-produced love is to be the driving force behind the use of our gifts in the church. Well, that's easy enough to understand, wouldn't you say? The church, the local church, is the body of Christ. We are made up of many members who have different gifts and functions within the church, but we're still one body. And God is the one who arranged us in this way. Not everyone has all the same gifts, but all the gifts are important. But right before Paul gets to the love chapter, he writes this. He says, earnestly desire the higher gifts. That seems strange, doesn't it? Well, let's keep some facts straight as we try to figure out how to desire the higher gifts and how to operate in love. First, God is the one who apportions and empowers the gifts through His Spirit. We do not pick and choose like we're at the Golden Corral buffet line. Second, in chapter 14, Paul writes, Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So it does appear that Paul is telling the church as a whole to desire the gift of prophecy to be displayed in the church. And then in chapter 14, verse 12, Paul says, So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Now, the whole point of chapter 14 is that prophecy is better or it's more useful to the entire church than tongues because it presents a clear word and builds up the entire church. So knowing all of that as background, it appears that Paul, back at the end of chapter 12, is telling the church to pursue the greater or higher gifts. Now remember, Paul actually ranks the first three gifts of people apostles, prophets, and teachers, and those are word-based, explanatory gifts that serve to make the gospel message clear. So it appears that Paul is telling the church as a whole to desire these greater gifts that make clear the gospel to be displayed in the church. I don't think he's telling individuals to pursue these certain gifts as if they can be attained by our strength. Rather, Paul is writing church you should want to see the word exalted clearly during the time that you guys are together. But if any of those gifts are going to be effective, there is a framework. There is a certain type of power that must be running through them, and it is the way of love. This seems to be the gist of what Paul is writing at this point. And in this text, Paul gives us three major reasons why love is the electricity behind spiritual gifts, the driving force behind the gifts. Love is essential for ministry because love brings clarity to the message of Jesus. Love brings believability to the messenger. And we're going to talk about those in the days to come. When you pray today, please remember Gerson Oriana and his family, our changemaker missionaries in Peru. And also remember the Song Hey Life Word broadcast that's heard in Burkina Faso, Guinea, Mali, and Mauritania.